Hi, Game Design Ed here, and I'm back playing around with Puzzle Explorer. Today, I want to show you how to build a logic puzzle. Puzzle Explorer's game design curriculum, as you remember, begins with simple maze design in the Yucatan Peninsula. Mazes, as you also remember, are puzzles in which a player attempts to reach a goal on a game board by finding the correct path within a complex, branching network of paths. Guess what? We'll continue to use what we learned about mazes when we move on to build logic puzzles. That's the scaffolding curriculum of Puzzle Explorer. So let's build a logic puzzle. Let's travel to the Antarctica. Here in Antarctica, just like at the Yucatan Peninsula, there are easy to follow step-by-step -step multimedia instructions, but here these instructions build on the maze design that we learned at the Yucatan, adding elements such as pushable objects, portals, and different types of ground that affect the player's movement. These elements help you build complex interactions for your logic puzzles. What is a logic puzzle? A logic puzzle is a puzzle that requires rational calculation to solve, whether using inductive, abductive, deductive, or other type of reasoning. That is, to solve a logic puzzle, the player must be able to hold the puzzle as a system in their head in order to think a few steps ahead of their current situation looking at both the individual parts of the puzzle and the puzzle as a whole in order to both make and test hypotheses about how to solve it. Basically, a logic puzzle challenges the player's mind and takes more complex thinking to solve than a maze does. So, let's build a logic puzzle. Let's start by building a maze. A maze, as you remember, is a great foundation for puzzle design. Now let's do some things that will challenge the player's mind and make this a logic puzzle. Let's add some icy paths that the player has to enter and exit at the correct spots. Let's add some ice blocks and snowballs that the player has to push into the correct positions. Let's add some portals that the player has to enter at the correct time and in the correct direction. And let's make it so the player has to do all of these things in a certain order to solve the puzzle. As you remember, this is called sequencing. Although I could, and probably should, I'm not going to play out each step and lay out all of the possible choices the player could make like I did in the video How to Make the Player Stop and Think. That was a good video about logic puzzles as well. Check out that link for that video below. In this video, I just want to look at three parts of the puzzle. This snowball, this combination of pushable objects, and this portal, and how we are limiting the number of times the player can travel through it. Let's test it out. So let's look at the snowball. It's the first meaningful decision we have to make. We walk up to this snowball. Should we push it or leave it? What would happen if we pushed it? It would block the camera. What would happen if we left it? We would have to come back to it later. But notice the broken ice next to it. Getting back to it won't be easy. But we should leave it. There will be a lot of steps between our first encounter and our final encounter with this snowball, so I just wanted to point it out right now. The player has to think quite a few steps ahead with this snowball, and then return to it. This really tests the player's mind, getting them to think this far ahead. So we leave the snowball for now, break these two blocks of thin ice, and now we're down here by a bunch of pushable objects. There's a certain combination that we need to crack in order to pass this part of the puzzle. So, while the player has to plan far into the future with the snowball, the player has a more immediate logical task with these pushable objects. But it isn't less challenging. Even though the player doesn't have to plan far into the future with this challenge, they do have to be able to hold a lot of different possibilities in their head. This is difficult to do. So what if I push the first snowball down? What if I don't? Either way, you lead to multiple different possibilities. If we push it down, we could go under these ice blocks and push them up. We can push these snowballs to the right and get the camera. But we won't be able to go back. Let's leave it, forcing us to slide down. Now we can push this ice block down, and then push this snowball over. But that breaks our access to the camera. We then have to waste this snowball, and then push the ice block over. And then we can finally push this snowball up. What should we do with this other ice block? We could push it to the right toward the camera.
or up to fill this hole above. We'll push it up for now. This combination of pushable objects is a neat little puzzle within the bigger puzzle. It forces the player to hold a lot of different possibilities in their head. Moving on. Let's move up. Get the camera and push this snowball down. And let's go through this portal. We have now gone through the portal once. If we step off the portal in either direction, we break some thin ice. What happens if we go down first to get the camera? Well, let's try it. We break the ice and slide to the first camera. We can push the ice block to make a bridge and get the second camera. We then come back up, and we can't push the snowball out of the way to get back to the portal. We're stuck. So let's try the other way. We slide to the left, breaking two thin ice blocks and pushing the pushable ice block into the water, making an ice bridge. So let's slide across that. We break some more thin ice. Here, we're back to where we started at the beginning of the puzzle. And we're back face to face with the snowball. So a quick aside for the snowball. This is another good thing to do in a logic puzzle. Interleave different aspects of the puzzle. The player is trying to hold a lot of information in their heads and we usually like to put that information in a linear order. So interleave the aspects of your puzzle to challenge your player's mind to be able to think about multiple things across different time frames. Some immediate, like the combination of pushable objects that we discussed, and some spaced out across longer periods of time, like with the snowball. So, should we push the snowball now? Well, the reason we didn't push it before was so that we didn't block the camera. The camera is now gone, so that's out of the way. Do we have to move the snowball now? Yes, if we have to move it at all, we have to move it now. We won't be able to get back on this side of the snowball again. The thin ice on the left side of the portal is broken, so we can't go that way again. And we can't slide up to this side of the snowball again because there is more broken thin ice. So if we're going to push it, we need to push it now. And we can only push it down. It will block our path to the compass. So is that a good idea? Well, there is one more span of water that we'll have to get across to get the compass, and we could use the snowball to make a snow bridge. So it could prove useful, but how will we be able to push it down there? We'll have to push it over in front of the portal and then push it down when we come out of the portal. So let's push it in there. And we are back to talking about the portal. We've already gone through it once, and we won't be able to come out that same way again. We'll need to go through it to get at least one of the two cameras on the right side of the puzzle. So let's go through the portal again. And this time, we can only go down. We break the ice and get the camera. We push the ice block down to make an ice bridge and get the second camera. We can then come back and push the snowball, making a snow bridge that will allow us to go back into the portal. We're not stuck anymore. So with the portal, we've limited the number of times the players can go through it. Well, I guess they can go through it as many times as they want now, but there wouldn't be any reason to. I think the important part of this is that they couldn't just pass through the portal whenever they wanted. There were consequences. If they went through it at the wrong time or went the wrong direction, it wouldn't work anymore, and you can't build a bridge to bypass the portal either, so the player has to use it. They had to complete things in a certain order. This, as you remember, is called sequencing. It takes some rational calculation to figure out how to use this set of portals correctly. So let's step through the portal again. Now we're face to face with this pesky snowball again. The snowball has now been something that we've returned to for the entire duration of the puzzle. It's the first thing we face, and it's now the last thing. All we have to do now is push it down to make a snow bridge, and then we get the compass. So there are three techniques that you can add to your game design tool belts to use when making logical puzzles. One, make the player hold a lot of things in their heads at once to solve some aspect of the puzzle, like the combination of pushable objects. Two, make the player hold things in their head for varying time frames. Some challenges should be immediate, like the combination of pushable objects, and some should be spread out across the duration of the puzzle, like with the snowball. Vary the time frame of your logical challenges. 3. Make the player hold different things in their head at once. Players want to put things in a linear order, 
So interleave the aspects of your puzzle to challenge your player's mind to be able to think about multiple things across different time frames. Some immediate, like the combination of pushable objects, and some spaced out across longer periods of time, like with the snowball, and some in between, like with the portals. So that concludes our second stop, Antarctica, in the game design curriculum of Puzzle Explorer, where we learned how to build a logic puzzle. This is Game Design Ed. Thanks for playing.